Okay, this is a video of a do-it-yourself slow cooker for doing nano coating. Um, I had a slow cooker that I was using for making nano coated plates and uh, the caustic uh, destroyed the slow cooker only after about I made about a half a dozen plates. So it wasn't very workable for production but it was a good idea because uh, it made some pretty good nano coated plates. I was real happy with the results. So I was trying to figure out a way that uh, this could be done uh, uh, more of a production basis, you know, without uh, messing up the equipment. So what this is, is uh, this is a hot plate and a casserole dish with a glass lid, and it's a temperature controller with a solid state relay. And there's a thermocouple that's attached to the heating surface of, of the hot plate, so uh, it can tell... Uh, when to turn the unit on and when to turn it off so you know for purposes of controlling the temperature so I have it set for 105 degrees Celsius which is barely over the boiling point and that's the green the green setting on the bottom and the actual process temperature that's the red temperature at the top and it's fluctuating and uh, the uh, controller reads that information and it uh, turns the hot plate on and off uh, as needed to try to maintain the temperature so, um, these uh, components are just arranged on a piece of plywood here just uh, to test the idea and see that it works. And all of these components are going to be put inside an enclosure where it will be uh, convenient and safe. Because right now, this has uh, got a live AC voltage from the mains there going into these wires here that are all exposed and it's very easy to get shocked by this there's a, a terminal wire a terminal uh, screws where that all attach to so you got a lot of exposed wires here so anybody's thinking about building this don't do this unless you know what you're doing because you can get uh, shocked and so you can get electrocuted okay so the only other cautions that uh that uh, came that I can uh, I'm aware of is this uh, casserole dish. It's not supposed to get hot too fast or get cold too fast. Uh, it, you're not supposed to put it on an open flame or put it in a broiler or anything like that. So this was started up cold. So I had cold caustic in it. Uh, the hot plate was cold. Everything was cold. And then I turned it on. So that way it heats up gradually. So anyway, um, I am hoping that this will produce uh, similar results that I got with the slow cooker and then um, for people who wish to use a slow cooker this might be a good solution so uh, I'm gonna pause the video now okay this is uh, resuming the video for this do-it-yourself slow cooker uh, I've taken all the parts and I've put them inside an enclosure. So I want to get a good look at this. This is a, a metal enclosure. It's got vents on it. It's got little feet. And on the back <clears throat> is where everything plugs in. So um, there's where the thermocouple plugs in. This is where the hot plate plugs in. This is the power cord and this is an on off switch it's not plugged in but that's how it works now the power cord is just a, a standard IEC power cord that's great because these uh, go really well uh, for these types of enclosures so I'll plug that back in and the power cord it's just a goes into it's, it's a snap-in AC outlet that's all that is and there there's the thermocouple connector right there so I'm going to plug it in now. Okay, so it's plugged in. So now it's more convenient and it's safe and it's uh, um, it's very easy to work with. Okay, so what I have here, I have uh, a new copper plate. I've got uh, cold caustic in there already prepared and I got it sitting on a wire mesh and it's sub completely uh, submerged in the caustic so I just put the lid on it 
and I turn the unit on right here. Okay, so it's coming on and it's going through its uh, initiation. Okay, so it's uh, I got it set for 105 degrees Celsius, and uh, it's starting out at 16, 17 degrees Celsius. The hot plate came on, and it's going to stay on for some time. It'll hit up around 90, 92 degrees or something like that, and then it'll start going on and off, on and off. Okay, so I'm going to... Just pause the video now until it heats up. Uh, you know, it'll take a few minutes before that's uh, heated up. So I'm going to pause the video now. The hot caustic bath is at a uniform temperature, which is not possible with the hot plate by itself, but is possible with a PID controller. The duration of the hot caustic bath was one hour and ten minutes at which time the unit was switched off and allowed to cool down for about 18 hours. You'll need a K-type thermocouple about one meter in length with a mini connector. This is what it looks like. The next clip shows where to place the thermocouple on the hot plate. Okay, so this is where I have the thermocouple attached to. It's wedged. There's a little spot weld on the end of the thermocouple, and it's wedged in between the cast iron surface of the plate and the stainless steel housing here. And I got a little duct tape holding it in place. And then uh, uh, I bring the bring the thermocouple cable down here and um, got it zip ties to this uh, uh, the power cord for the hot plate. So that's just a simple way of putting it on, and uh, it should hold. And then uh, it's pretty reliable. Like I said, it's wedged in there, and the tape just keeps it from, you know, yanking it out accidentally. So it's doing its job, and it's able to read it properly. This is the circuit diagram for wiring the controller. It might be helpful to pause the video and make a screenshot of the circuit that you can print out for reference. This is a 180 degree view of the chassis. It shows how all the wiring and the parts are arranged. The video description contains a list of all the parts and some suggestions where to obtain them. I hope you find this video useful. Thank you for watching.